Hey guys, welcome to the Easter season. I'm so excited that you're here. It's officially the time of year for the best candy. Marshmallow peeps, jelly beans, sweetheart chicks, eggs, bunnies, and Reese's peanut butter eggs. Leaders, I want you to go ahead and spread some cheer with candy for everyone. You know what one of my favorite things about Easter is besides the candy? The traditions. There are certain things about Easter that I look forward to every year, no matter what. Every year, as far back as I can remember, my mom would always get me a new outfit to wear to church for Easter. And my whole family, my grandparents, all my aunts and uncles and cousins would gather together to eat a huge meal. There was usually ham and mashed potatoes and homemade rolls, and there was always tons of dessert. And then we kids would all go outside for the most epic Easter egg hunts. My grandparents' house had a giant yard, like I'm talking about multiple acres with flower beds everywhere. And all of the aunts and uncles would hide hundreds of eggs for us to find. And my grandma was not one to skimp on the holidays. She always filled the eggs with all of the best candy, none of the nasty cheap stuff. And she would also fill some eggs with cash. Easter was always one of the best times of year and I always looked forward to it and knew that it would be the best no matter what. And while the candy and decorations and games and the fun Easter traditions are cool, Easter is really a time to remember and celebrate an event that drastically shifted the entire world. An event that shows us that no matter who we are, what we do, or what we think about all of this faith stuff, Jesus loves us no matter what. Can I ask you a question? What comes to mind when you hear this phrase? Jesus loves you no matter what. Maybe you've heard people say it before. It might be the kind of thing that your parents say or your grandma always talks about or something that you hear every week when you're here at church. To you, this isn't just something you hear about at Easter, it's something you hear all the time. It might even be something that you believe. You show up at church, you read your Bible, and you want to know Jesus more because you believe he loves you no matter what. After all, sounds pretty good, right? I mean, the idea that the Jesus we talk about here at church every single week loves you no matter what. That's pretty awesome. Or maybe you've never really thought about it before. Sure, all of this Easter stuff sounds really good and the idea that anybody would love you no matter what, that's not too bad either. But Jesus? You haven't really given him much thought and how he feels about you. You've got school and sports and siblings and friends and all the activities, the social media, video games, all the very real things that take up space in your mind as a student. And all of this Jesus stuff and what it has to do with you, you're just not really sure about and haven't given it much thought. Or maybe you hear the phrase, Jesus loves you no matter what, and wonder if it could even be true. At Easter, we talk about Jesus dying on the cross and then coming back to life to show us that He loves us no matter what. But if you're honest, that feels a little too hard to believe. Maybe it's easier to believe that God is angry or disappointed or distant no matter what. If He's this big, all-knowing God, then that means He knows the things that you've done, for better or for worse. He knows that you've cheated on tests or lied to your parents or shown up at that party that you knew you weren't supposed to. He knows the way you've treated other people and the things that you've tried to keep secret. And because of that, you feel like it would be almost impossible to believe that He could love you no matter what. Well, whatever comes to mind for you when you think about Jesus loving you no matter what, here's one thing that I want you to know. It's true. No matter what we think, no matter what we feel, no matter what we do, Easter is the proof that Jesus loves us totally and completely. How do I know? Well, not only because I've experienced it, but because I've learned a thing or two about it from one of Jesus' closest friends. Now, there are a lot of people from Scripture who were directly impacted by Jesus and played a part in the Easter story. In the coming weeks, we'll talk about all of them, but today I'm going to talk about a guy named John. Quick backstory. John was Jewish, so he grew up studying the scriptures, what we now call the Old Testament. Those scriptures tell the story of God and the history of the Jewish people. But like many Jewish people at the time, John was waiting for God to send the Savior, the rescuer that he had promised to send. It had been a long, long time of waiting for God to fulfill his promise, 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have to wait and wait and wait on someone, I start to wonder if something is up. Maybe they're angry at me. Maybe I've done something wrong. So I think it's fair to guess that John might have wondered the same thing. Maybe he wondered if God was angry at him and his people. What was God up to? Maybe he had abandoned them or had forgotten about them or was just disappointed in them. We can't be totally sure what John was wondering, but we do know that John was human. And because of that, I guess at some point he probably questioned whether or not the God that he learned about when he was growing up was really a loving and good God. If he really would fulfill all of the promises that he had made. And I would bet that John wondered what was taking God so long. But then something really big happened. God sent his son Jesus to the world. And as we see in the beginning of the second part of the Bible called the New Testament, Jesus met John and John began to follow him. In fact, John became one of Jesus's closest friends while here on earth. So being that up close and personal to Jesus, you'd probably think that John got it right away. He saw several miracles Jesus performed. He saw the way Jesus treated people. John heard Jesus preach powerful sermons about the kingdom of God. He heard Jesus talk about how in God's kingdom, the hungry are fed, thirsty are filled, refugees are welcomed in, the naked are clothed, the sick are cared for, and the prisoners are freed. John listened to all of the stuff Jesus taught about what it means to love others. And because of that, John just figured out that God really did love us all, no matter what. Right? Well, not exactly. You see the stories in the Gospels? Those four books that tell about Jesus' life on earth show us time and again the way Jesus' followers struggled to understand his teaching. There were several times where even his closest followers were confused about what Jesus was talking about and doing. Why did Jesus talk to certain people? How did Jesus have control over storms? What did Jesus mean when he said, blessed are the poor? Jesus' followers heard what he said and saw what he did, but they had questions. They had doubts. They didn't always get it. And honestly, they were just like us in that way. But then something else happened. Something that we celebrate every year at Easter and that something changed everything. That something was the resurrection. So your first question might be, what do you mean the resurrection? And the second one is probably, why does this matter to me or my friends? Well, let me break it down for you. To resurrect something means to bring it back to life. So at Easter, we remember when Jesus died on a cross and was buried in a tomb, and then we celebrate the fact that he walked out of that tomb three days later. In other words, he came back to life, which is what we call the resurrection. Why is this such a big deal? Well, for starters, Jesus said lots of things while he was alive, including that he was gonna rise from the dead. So if he had stayed dead after he was killed, that would have meant that everything he said during his lifetime wasn't true. But as we know, that's not what happened. Jesus did come back to life just like he said he would. And that meant that all those other things he said during his life were true too. John, who grew up studying the scriptures, would have known that death was usually a consequence of sin. So when somebody committed a sin or made a mistake, the punishment would have been death. In order to avoid that death, something needed to be sacrificed in order to take the punishment for that person. And that's where Jesus came in. You see, God sent Jesus to earth to sacrifice himself for us, to pay the price for our sins, to make sure that we don't have to carry the weight of those mistakes or experience those consequences. But then Jesus came back to life. He defeated death. That means that death doesn't have power anymore. Even though we will physically die, Jesus made a way for that not to be the end of the story. If we believe in him, then we get to know that we will live with him forever, no matter what. And that is worth celebrating. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross changed so much for so many of us, including John. John didn't need to wonder if God had given up on keeping his promise. Jesus' resurrection showed John that God did really love him, and it also showed him that God loves people who aren't like him too. God loves every person enough that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. He loves every person enough to defeat death. 
He loves every person enough to make a way for John and for all of us to be in a relationship with him that will last forever. You see, Easter reminds us that we are loved no matter what. And we know this because John wrote it down. Later in his life, he reflected on his experiences and wrote this in a letter to other believers. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. John was there when all of it happened. He walked with Jesus, watched him get crucified on a cross, and then saw him alive again three days later. When John wrote about this love that God has for all of us and the sacrifice of Jesus, he knew what he was talking about. Easter reminds us that we are loved no matter what. All this stuff John wrote about in the verse we looked at, all the stuff that reminded him that Jesus really did love everyone no matter what, well, that same stuff applies to our lives too. I want us to look at this verse again, but this time, I want you to read it in a different way. I want you to read it as if it was written just for you. God showed how much he loved you by sending his one and only son into the world so that you might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that you loved God, but that he loved you and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away your sins. So what does this scripture have to do with each of us in this room? Well, what's awesome about scripture is that we can personalize it as if it was written just for us. Personalizing a verse like this helps remind us what God says is true for all of us. The scripture that we just read about God's love is true for you and it's true for me. And that's why at Easter, it matters. It didn't just matter for people who lived thousands of years ago. Easter was the event that changed history for everybody in a way that we can relate to God forever. We can have a relationship with God because of what we celebrate at Easter. Easter reminds us that we are loved no matter what.